When was the last time you spent a day in bed? Or when was the last time you spent a day in your pyjama and you didn't leave home? In short, when was the last time you had a proper rest? But anyway, why should we rest? Most of the people are telling us to work hard and even harder. But why is it unavoidable to take a rest? The state of a rest is defined like this. It's a freedom from activity or labor or a state of motionlessness or inactivity. And I quite like this one. Being in peace of mind or spirit. We need to rest and we need to use it as a tool to stay healthy, to be a good person and to do a good and effective job. And in this episode, I'm going to make you to want to take a rest right away. So be aware, if you are on the way to work, maybe you should listen to this episode when you are on the way back home. And if you are a hard-working woman or man, don't worry, you can still carry on like this if you have some breaks from time to time. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's me again, Anna Yelen, your time expert. Without my breaks, I would be a wreck. And thanks to my breaks, I keep smiling. Thanks to my breaks, I feel that I'm living in a very happy and healthy body. And... Due to my breaks, I have enough energy to really lean into my work and try to do my best job. When I think about taking a break, my heart starts parting. It's like, oh yes, that is so cool. And I always get this image from myself lying in a hammock or rolling around in bed as I did as a kid and just staring at the ceiling for hours and thinking about life. Remember this? It's such a cool thing to do. And if you haven't done this for a long time, do it. Personally, I do all sorts of breaks. It's my body and mind telling me which one I need. A small one, a rather a big one. And there are all kind of sorts of resting. And everyone has to find out what a good rest is. There is a fantastic book about rest. And I would love to read some parts of the introduction because the author called Alex So Jung Kim Pang just gets it on the point. So here we go. The book is called Rest, Why You Get More Done When You Work Less by Alex So Jung Kim Pang. This is a book about work. It is also, of course, a book about rest. And this sounds paradoxical, but it illustrates the book's central idea. Many of us are interested in how to work better, but we don't think very much about how to rest better. Productivity books offer life hacks, advice about how to get more done, or stories about what CEOs or famous writers do. But they say almost nothing about the role of rest in the lives or careers of creative, productive people. When they do mention rest, they tend to treat it as nothing more than a physical necessity or inconvenience. Books about rest or leisure, meanwhile, seem mainly interested in escaping work, not improving your ability to do meaningful work. They praise idleness as an antidote to overwork and an expression of wisdom. The clever man may work smarter, not harder, they say, but the creative man doesn't work at all. Other writers portray leisure as a luxury to be consumed and broadcast. And for them, the good life is an endless summer shared with just the right washed out Instagram filter. As a result, we see work and rest as binaries. Even more problematic, we think of rest as simply the absence of work, not as something that stands on its own or has its own qualities. Rest is merely a negative space in a life defined by toil and ambition and accomplishment. When we define ourselves by our work, by our dedication and effectiveness and willingness, 
to go the extra mile, then it's easy to see rest as the negation of all these things. If your work is yourself, when you cease to work, you cease to exist. When we think of rest as work's opposite, we take it less seriously and even avoid it. Americans work more and vacation less than almost any other nationality in the world. Contrary to the expectations of economists and in defiance of common sense, as we become more productive, we work longer hours, not shorter. We leave vacation days unused. And when we do finally go on vacation, we compulsively check our email. I argue that we misunderstood the relationship between work and rest. Work and rest are not polar opposites. You cannot talk about rest without also talking about work. Writing about only one is like writing a romance and naming only one of the lovers. Rest is not work's adversary. Rest is work's partner. They complement and complete each other. Further, you cannot work well without resting well. Some of history's most creative people, the people whose achievements in art and science and literature are legendary, took rest very seriously. They found that in order to realize their ambitions, to do the kind of work they wanted to, they needed rest. The right kinds of rest would restore their energy while allowing them use that mysterious part of their minds that helps drive the creative process to keep going. So work and rest aren't opposites like black and white or good and evil. They're more like different points on life's way. You can't have a crest without a throw. You can't have the highs without the lows. Neither can exist without the other. We underestimate how much good serious rest can do us. And we also underestimate how much we can do if we take rest seriously. I enjoy both good work and good rest. I love intellectual and physical challenges, the sense of purpose and accomplishment that comes from getting both big and little things done. For me, the feeling that accompanies a creative breakthrough and even just the feeling of chasing an idea, immersing myself in a problem and matching my talents against a big challenge is as addicting and exciting as any game, as physically satisfying and stimulating as food and I really like food, as emotionally fulfilling and essential as being in love. Hard work can be both honorable and rewarding. I look back fondly on some of my hardest jobs because of the camaraderie I found working long hours with good people, pushing the boundaries of our company and trying new things. I find visions of the good life that feature wealth creation systems and early retirement cross and distasteful. In contrast, the arguments of psychologists like Viktor Frankl and Mihaly Ko, oh, I, I love him, but I can't say the name. Mihaly Csikszent Mihaly. He's the one who wrote Flow. Look at the book Flow. It's it's brilliant. But anyway. Mihaly, ha, 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 that the good life is defined by a search for meaning and an abundance of challenges make profound intuitive <laughs> sense. <laughs> oh dear, sorry. Okay, let's go one more time with this phrase. In contrast, the arguments of psychologists like Viktor Frankl and Mihaly, ha, 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 that the good life is defined by a search for meaning and an abundance of challenges make profound intuitive sense. So my interest in rest doesn't arise from a distaste for work. It starts with a sense that we should embrace challenges, not avoid them. That work isn't a bad thing, but an absolute necessity for a meaningful, fulfilling life. But I've also come to see our respect for overwork as, perhaps a bit paradoxically, intellectually lazy. Measuring time is literally the easiest way to assess someone's dedication and productivity, but it's also very unreliable. Love this phrase. I love this phrase. Okay, I'll take it once again because I just love this phrase. Measuring time 
is literally the easiest way to assess someone's dedication and productivity, but it's also very unreliable. At the same time, I love serious rest. Not idle hours watching Russian dashboard cam videos and taking Facebook quizzes to see which twilight, char twilight character I am, but beautifully empty hours that stretch out, untouchable by clients or colleagues or especially children. I love sleeping, the physical sensation of my body settling into bed, of unconsciousness rising like the moon. I'm motivated to finish my work by the prospect of an hour at the gym. Of course, I can't claim any special insight here. The ancient Greeks saw rest as a great gift, as the pinnacle of civilized life. The Roman Stoics argued that you cannot have a good life without good work. Indeed, virtually every ancient society recognized that both work and rest were necessary for a good life. One provided the means to live, the other gave meaning to life. Today, we've lost touch with that wisdom and our lives are poorer and less fulfilling as a result. It's time we rediscovered the good that rest can do. Now, I could carry on for this for hours talking about rest. And I mean, this was just a small introduction of the introduction. But that is exactly what it is. Today, it is an introduction, an introduction how to rest. And believe me, I'm going to come back with this topic anyway, because it's such a big topic in my life. And as I said, I would be a wreck without those rests. So hopefully I will be able to inspire you to make a rest. And today, without even a big reason, just take a rest. Find out what kind of rest you want to have in the next few days and plan it. Shall it be a rest like spending a weekend at home? Do you want to go to a spa all by yourself? Or shall it be a rest with or without input? And the second idea I want you to think about is this. What kind of rest can you have every single day? And how could that look like? Tea breaks? A walk at lunch? An hour of resting in the evening? Just think about this. There is this one question I get a lot. When do I know that it is time for a break? Simple. I have two ways of approaching this question and it works quite well for me, so hopefully also for you. First, I ask myself on which level from 0 to 10 my level of focus is. Am I able to focus and concentrate on whatever I'm doing? And 0 is no focus at all. 10 is full throttle. I'm in it, I can go for it. And if I'm above a 5, I'll carry on. But if I'm below a 5, I know I will have to take a break. And that's when I will go and make a cup of tea or go outside for a few minutes. Normally, that helps already. The second question I ask myself is the following. On a scale from 0 to 10, how is my energy level right now? And you will feel right away if it is time to take a break or not. I remember I had these two questions sticking on my desk for months and it really helped me to develop a kind of do I need a break feeling. So hopefully there is something you could take from this episode today. When you are listening to this, I will already have spent a few hours in prison to talk to inmates about time. And I can't wait to tell you what I've learned or tell you about some special moments I have experienced. Moments which will teach us another or a new perspective of time, maybe. We'll see. Now, my dear ones out there, take care. Embrace the time you still have. Put some life into your daily moments and make them special and big and unforgettable. And even the moments of rest. Now take care and thank you for being here. Bye. By the way, if you have some friends near Sofia, Bulgaria, tell them there will be a super event on the 9th of March in the National Theatre of Sofia. TEDx will be organizing this and believe me, I've seen the speakers and I think we will learn a lot from them. 
and I just have the chance to be one of them and I'm really looking forward to this day. So if you know anyone there, tell them to go and tell them to come to me and I'm going to have a chat with them about time. And that is exactly what I love doing. Bye.